Previously on the Hardy Boys. Open up! There's no escape, you two! We're 50 feet up! Just give up now! Better put some haste in your hack, Joe. I don't think that chair is gonna hold much longer. I'll do my job, you do yours. Just find us a way out of here. This must be safety glass. It isn't making this easy. Find something we can use as a rope. We break our necks jumping down from here. Got it. Crap! Don't move, boys! Mr. Ingalls would like a word with you. Geronimo! Hey, oh, what's going on? Endangering a pedestrian? Reckless driving? Running a red light? This really isn't anything to laugh about, boys. When your father and I agreed to get you both motorcycles, we set very strict conditions. Did you know that almost 50% of accidents involving motorcycles result in serious injuries? You can't afford to disregard the law. Mom, what are you talking about? We didn't... Officer Piedmont would like to speak to you boys. I don't know what to make of this. I really don't. I'm very disappointed in the both of you. Quiet, playback. Well, you boys have really gotten yourself into some hot water now. You're wrong there. That water was freezing. What did we do? <clears throat> Under Article 418 of the Bayport Penal Code, I am hereby authorized to charge you both with violating the traffic code under Article 418 of the Bayport Penal Code. You're not really a police officer, are you? No. I work for the ATAC. I should have gone over my script a bit more. I'm, I'm just spouting out words here. I can tell. So you work for American Teens Against Crime, too? What about the handshake? At least I remembered something right. My name is actually Piedmont. Eric Piedmont, ATAC agent. ATAC agent! ATAC agent! <laughs> Quiet, playback. Couldn't you have come as a delivery guy or something? How are we gonna talk our way out of this one to Mom? We'll be lucky if we get to keep the bikes at all. Sorry, orders. We had to get this package to you immediately without any chance of it being intercepted. I can tell your mom I mistook you for someone else. No, that might make her suspicious. We'll take care of it. My apologies, boys. Sorry for disturbing you. That was so embarrassing. A police officer in our own house. Oh, it's a good thing he was young. It would have been worse if it was someone your father might have known. Mom, you don't understand. I'll tell you what I do understand. I understand that you won't be using your bikes at all today, and possibly for a long time. When your father gets home this evening, we can talk about exactly what your punishment will be. How are we gonna get out of this? We'll figure something out. Let's take a look at that disc. I'll just borrow it. Samuel Spencer, the owner of Spencer Mansion, one of the largest manor houses in North America. Spencer Mansion was burgled and robbed. It was a professional job. The thief or thieves knew what they wanted and exactly where in the house it was located. $200 million in bearer bonds, issued over 50 years ago from the Rothschild Corporation, were securely kept in the study 
locked in a Mosler safe. Mosler safes are virtually impregnable. This particular safe weighed over a thousand pounds. There were no signs of explosives, not that it would have mattered. The Mosler can withstand any conventional explosive known. Whoever broke into this safe almost certainly knew the combination. This theft presents certain difficulties that you two may be in a unique position to overcome. You may have heard the expression, possession is nine-tenths of the law. In the case of bearer bonds, possession is ten-tenths of the law. They hold no allegiance to anyone but their possessor. To make matters worse, the Rothschild Corporation is based out of Great Britain. International law is not as swift as we might like. The thief would have no problem cashing them in before we could get Interpol the authorization to stop him or her. The strange thing is, nobody has cashed in the bonds. The circumstances of the theft point towards the perpetrator being a professional, and any professional would know their only chance is to cash the bonds as quickly as possible and escape to a country where extradition is difficult. This and the fact that we have been monitoring all flights and interstates out of Bayport with no success leads us to believe the thief may still be in Bayport. Who is the thief? Why would the thief stay in Bayport? Why would the thief not cash the bonds as soon as possible? With every day that passes, the chance of redeeming the bonds without being apprehended diminishes. These are difficult questions. We hope you two can answer them all. As usual, this mission is top secret. The disc will reformat into a music CD in five, four, three, two, one. Two hundred million dollars. I've heard of Spencer Mansion. It's just past Miller's Hill outside of town. It's a pretty creepy looking place. It's supposed to be haunted. We better go there first. Ask the Samuel Spencer some questions. How are we going to do that? Mom took our keys, and Dad won't be home for hours. I'll call him. He'll clear this up. Don't use the house phone. Mom might pick up. Then our cover would be blown for sure. Use yourself. I left it in my bike compartment last night. Use yours. Ah. You're kidding. Of all the luck. No use just standing around. We have to find a way to get to our phones without Mom seeing us. Boys, get back to your room this instant. When your father comes home, we can all have a nice long talk about a suitable punishment. I don't know what it will be, but I imagine it will involve manual labor. We have to find a way to get those cell phones without Mom finding out. I'm aware of the situation, Frank. Yeah, well, I thought it was worth repeating. I don't think we have a choice, Joe. If we want our phones, we're gonna have to leave the house through the window. And I guess that takes you out of the picture. You still have the scabs on your legs to prove you aren't much of a climber. I can't even count how many times that tree's helped me sneak out. And in. I guess I'm gonna have to trust you to do this on your own. Just don't do anything stupid, okay? If Aunt Trudy catches us? Sorry. Is anyone there? Creaky old floors.
I'll just take this. Could come in handy. Yes! Our bikes! They were a gift from Dad. Aha! Cell phone! I don't think anyone will miss this. I don't think anyone will miss this. Yes! Aha! Pretty clever, if I do say so myself. That's thinking outside the box. This could be useful. Pretty clever if I do say so myself. Are you calling him? Hello? Frank? Hello? It's called a clue. Get one, Joe. Dad? It's Frank. Yes. No, we're, we're fine. That, that's just it. We just had a visit from the ATAC with our next assignment. Really? <laughs> I'm not so sure they thought that one all the way through. Don't worry, Frank. I'll call her right now, take care of it.
You need to get over there as soon as possible. Mind that Samuel Spencer. He's a piece of work. We butted heads a few times when I was on the force. Yeah, that's not a problem, son. You two be careful. Call me when you can. I love you too. And watch out for your brother. Bye, son. Don't ask me how you got out of this one. Your father just called. He needs your help at the garden center. But don't think for a minute that we aren't going to have a long talk when you all get home. <sighs> your keys are on the table downstairs. Where's Joe? He's in the bathroom. The keys to your bikes are in the dish on top of the credenza. Be careful, and don't you boys dare speed. Hello? Remember that girl from the bookstore? The one you had the crush on? When I got back from camp, she wasn't working there anymore. I never saw her again. How'd you do at camp? MVP? What are you talking about? I broke my arm the first day, you know that. So you never got to first? <laughs> I see where this is going, and let me warn you, Joe. A broken arm hurts. It'd be a shame if you got one. Just joking. Hey, Joe, what do you think of Lily? Lily? Lily Spencer? That's the one. To be fair, I don't know her that well. And anyway, I think she has eyes for you. Really? Well, what makes you say that? Because all pretty girls have eyes for you, Frank. It's your curse. Very funny. Look, don't pull anything when we see her again. I hate it when you embarrass me in front of girls. Moi? I'm always the picture of civility. Just keep a lid on it. 